why, why we decided to honor Joao is because of the death of that kind of leadership in the country right now. You know, so we want to bring that kind of leadership back into the room so that young people like us who aspire to leadership would uh, be guided by, 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 by <laughs> those things that made him who he is. So, the, the activities is um, we will head up to the main house now. Uh, last night, we got Dr. Mrs. Tokumawo, who is waiting for us. We are out and exchange with her. We visit the museum, we visit his, um, the private um, residence and all of that. Then, after that, we'll come back here for a performance by 1 o'clock. You know, two teams are playing in his honor. And then, after that, we'll go straight to the, um, to the, to the civic center to watch the um, snippers of the play. My name is Kevin Jibad, by God's grace, President of the Bull Riders. So we're here today with our friends, the super bikers of Abel Kuta, as the President Rider of Bali. So why are we here? Today, we are extolling the virtues of the late, great Chief of Bafemi, Awolowo. The car that Papa uh, uh, campaigned in in 1979 and 1983. Wow. This car traveled all over Nigeria, the length and breadth of Nigeria. Because Papa's campaign style is different from these days. His campaign style was that he would go to absolutely every town, certainly, and to many hamlets and villages. Um, sometimes he would be he heading from one town to another, and the, the people in the hamlets and villages in between will stand on the road and prevent him from going there. You must stop I, I, and talk I wanted to, to say I was one of the people who did that in Ekiti. We stopped there. We stopped this car. More than anybody. Yeah, in Ekiti. That's a yes. Sunday we had what yes. Mama is saying yes. happened most. They will stop I, him. <laughs> At times they have to carry Baba with another car to, to another car. town. Why the car will be with us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this car did a lot of journeys throughout Nigeria. So that's the car. Yeah. So Are the clothes he wore at his last outing to uh, worry on the 
uh, what was it, third, second, second of May, May. Mm -hmm. 1987. One of the clothes he used to wear to go to campaign, his clothes. You need to see this. You need to see this. <laughs> That's what he was wearing when he died. Oh. Those were the clothes we found here. That's the toothbrush that was in his mouth. Ooh, those are the clothes. Look at this little boy. <laughs> <laughs> those are the clothes that he wore to but when he was going to be embalmed. He used to play music to calm himself down. And he any time he traveled um, abroad, he carried it as hand luggage. Mm -hmm. He always carried it as hand luggage. That's his chest set. That is the IU. I think that's behind. That he donated to MV Oreo and it was returned to him when the MV Oreo was decommissioned. Coins, the Naira. You know, when the Nigerian currency was changed, so they were given to him. Many people don't know that he named uh, currency. He called, he, he, it was, yeah, he named it the Naira. It was Nigeria without the consonants. Some of his shoes is uh, silk shoes that silk. he used to wear. Yes, those shoes are silk. Um, both of them. And he used to work. Oh, yes, yeah. he bought them when he became a mm -hmm. So he was so called the way to his feet. <laughs> yeah, and those socks, I don't know whether anybody folds their socks that way anymore. Do they still do that? I doubt it. That's it. He That's had a special way he folded his socks. So he would just put his feet in straight and hold it home. Uh, that is his transcript. When you have time, you come back and read what he wrote. And that was his entry on the day they announced the results of the elections in 1983. That's what he thought. Hmm. That chair behind you is one of a pair. That is what they sat on on their wedding. Wow. Yeah. Yes, this was the only one that survived. The other one is... Okay, 1937. Yeah. That was the last book he wrote, The Travels of Democracy. Um, it was to have been launched on the day that we buried him. That book, The Travels of Democracy. And then there was another one that he was already writing. He, we found the transcript. But uh, he, he had a unique um, shorthand. Hmm. If, you, if you go back there, you see that it's not the ordinary shorthand. So people, people, people have tried to decode it. You see that there were lines that they couldn't get. It was his own, that's it. So that book, we can't, we can't decode it. The very last one, it was uh, supposed to have been entitled for the good of the people. Um, 
the last public letter he wrote, I, I think that has been making the rounds in, yes, yes, in yes, recent yes. days. Yeah. His yes. last, when you down the last sentence, it, it wasn't even the turning down that was, he did that in, in the first two paragraphs. But the rest of it was about Nigeria and Nigerians, that nothing good can happen unless Nigerians change. B but the way he looked at it, he, he didn't think Nigerians would change unless God himself <laughs> imbued in, in them the, the desire to change. And it was his last sentence that really sent shivers down my spine. He said, there's always a, a, an option to settle for permanent social instability and chaos. That was where he signed off that letter. But the, the, the Nigerians have an option to settle for permanent instability and chaos. That was written in 1986. Uh, so, uh, what we what first of all must be very, um, we are very grateful for giving us this opportunity for opening us up to this. And I'll tell you why. Why me personally I'm very happy. Uh, what you are seeing here now is a subtle rebellion. It's, mm. it's, it's, it's a way that young people are rejecting this crop of leadership by yearning for this type of leadership that mm. some of us were not even born to see. So, principled leadership, leadership based on integrity, leadership that is very selfless, are things that are very um, um, alien to our generation, our generation after all. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been pure joy. It has been pure joy for me to welcome you to this uh, house. Uh, it has been a real pleasure. And I hope it has been worth your while to have come all this way. Uh, I hope you have seen everything you hoped to see, heard everything you hoped to hear, and learned everything you hoped to learn. But even if you didn't, we consider this a first visit. You are always welcome. Anytime you want to come back, please feel free to ask and the door will be opened onto you. E.B., thank you so much. Aburo Kataki. For such a long, long, long time. Oshu, God bless you. And as you ride your bikes up and down the nation, the Lord will, will the Lord will protect you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah and give you safe passage Amen. everywhere you go. Amen. And uh, my final prayer is for Nigeria. It will be well with Nigeria. Amen. In Jesus' name. With people like you, it will be well. Thank you all for coming. God bless you.
I didn't know Awolowo when it was alive. I think he had died even before I was born. So we've been hearing about Awolowo in history. I, I read that he was the father of um, free education and also the father of um, free health care for children, especially in the western part of um, Nigeria. Uh -huh. So um, touring his museum, seeing the, uh, the wristwatch he wore last, his glasses and the most famous cap so got me happy and wild that yes thank god I, that i did not miss it thank god i did not miss it i've come closer to the abode of the legion chief of our family and i've uh, in the course of living with the doctor his, his youngest daughter the surviving do daughter the, uh, dr dosumo uh, there the are a couple of new insight to the man that you never hear in the media uh, that are brought to fall today. There are also people that I, I met a guy for me that, that lives, that grew up here. He has more insight into the life and the times of the man. So coming to Ikene today, to the home of the lady, has brought more insight and more truth to the fall about the man. And then uh, it's interesting to me as well the quality of the facility of the Real Mall Football Stadium. It's uh, it, it blows my mind. It's as good like we're in uh, Manchester or any of the other foreign uh, clubs, stadia or stadium in the world. The youth coming up as well, I would advise that um, they should be able to uh, discover purpose. You know, uh, it's not only in the religious aspect that a man could be called. A man could be called in many areas to fulfill purpose. I felt that at the stage, the late stage, uh, lived with a sense of purpose, with a self-awareness of what was done, and he was able to play his role. Just uh, a couple of minutes ago, we just got back from the stadium to watch a charity match in his honor as well. That was also interesting. We saw, you know, um, a bunch of kids, um, you know, battling it out on the football pitch, and um, right now we are here to to watch the next segment of the of the day which is a stage play organized in his honor by the duke of shomolu foundation and i'm excited i'm looking forward to it i think it will be really interesting <laughs> 